so it's it's great to be here and be talking about this. I um you know I don't often get to talk about uh, the how and the why behind what we do. Um, you know I think so often in schools what I have found so just uh, a little more like I uh, you all are very kind and, and combined my resume and bio with my business partner. So I didn't actually do everything that he just said, but I did um, spend a lot of time at the Tennessee Department of Education. I have worked a lot with um, individual charter schools and uh, education advocacy organizations in general, trying to help them raise awareness about what they're doing. And I think so often what I find is um, it's hard to know when you're so close to something, what is interesting and what is newsworthy and what you should be trying to get attention for when it comes to the impact that you're making. Um, you know, we talked a little bit yesterday um, and I was trying to, I think there are so many different ways, directions we could go with this conversation, but I think a way that would be helpful for, my, for me is to talk about um, trying to raise awareness with the media, the news media, because I think so often that's what people want to do when they're thinking about how to raise awareness about what they're doing. And I think about stories and impacts, impact stories specifically falling into several buckets. So obviously the something that's newsworthy, something that's new and different, you know, a program that started or a school that's open, that's an obvious thing, right? Um, results are another thing. So, you know, is what we're doing actually working? And that falls closely in line with the next thing, which is success. Um, you know, is what we're doing being positively recognized? And I think a lot of you that have, um, that are working with POSSIP, you naturally have some opportunities for showing that through, you know, the data that you're given. Um, and I think the, the, they're a great way to kind of um, find story ideas, right? Um, momentum is another thing, you know, can we document that what we're doing is um, increasing or it's um, systematic or it's helping positively change our school or our community in some way. Um, the next one is validation, you know, are there people, um, are there important people or organizations who are showing that they value what you're doing, you know, and that can be different for everybody. I think that can be um, internally, it can be board members, it can be community members, it can be parents, parent groups, um, you know, it just depends on, on who your audiences are. And then I think um, the last one I would mention is um, human interest. And that kind of takes a lot of different forms, but you know, how can we take what we're doing and put a human face on it? And again, I think POSIP can be a really powerful tool for you there. Um, as well by identifying people who, you know, have interesting stories and who may or may not, you know, may be willing to talk about it with you too. So I feel like those are kind of six things um, in a news results, success, momentum, validation, and human interest that are, that can make a, an impact story really compelling, not just, you know, obviously you've got a lot of different audiences you're considering, but I think, um, you know, running something through the, is this newsworthy enough for a reporter to cover it is always a good um, litmus test, I think, for is something compelling for other audiences too. So that's kind of what comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. So much of you, what you were just saying right now reminded me of, um, uh, oh, what do you uh, call this name? Um, of something, well, basically a lot of the stories that I read, um, particularly um, like on, on Instagram that really like, really catch and they tell it over over time over mm -hmm. several photos with just the actual messaging and you think about the 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 human interest element of it um and how that is just it just connects and speaks to you in many ways but one of the things you said that really really stuck with me too is like it's just hard to know when you're so close to something that is really like that interesting and or, or or newsworthy um mm -hmm. and that gets me thinking a lot about some of your work uh nick i know you all have that amazing outdoor classroom. We've seen stories about this classroom in multiple publications, including NPR, People. Um, we've even written about it in our own POSIT blog here. Now, why was it so important to get that story out about your school and, and how did you go about doing that? Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Um, and I must say, we initially thought that this was not a big deal. <laughs> we, <laughs> our thought was, hey, let's create a classroom outdoors. Uh, it's going to provide, you know, academic setting for kids. It's going to have fresh air. Um, but we had no idea that locally and nationally they picked this up as like a, a thing. Um, and so what we were hoping to do um, by sharing the story is that sharing the fact that innovation still happens in the pandemic, right? There are some great things happening in the midst of all the pressure that 
um, you know, educators have right now, uh, the students are under socially, emotionally, there's still like innovation, right? And we're really doing, uh, we're, we're doing the school. It looks different, uh, but it's happening. It's happening at a very high level. Um, and so we, we capitalize on our district uh, resources. So we have a district television station. Um, and so we use that medium first to kind of spread the word. Um, and then uh, from there, we, we post it on our Facebook, our social media pages. Uh, we share through our uh, weekly parental blast. Said, hey, we got a classroom outdoors. Uh, I know you want to come in the building. You can't come in the building, but you can come outside and you can interact in that way. You can volunteer with, our, with your kids outside, interact in that way. Um, and so we just found ways that were internal for us in terms of our communication uh, and just kind of branched out from there. Mm -mm. You know, one of the things you said, um, especially even a call out that the innovation is, is still happening in the pandemic. Um, and I think we can always feel how, <laughs> feel like the whole, I mean, which it did, um, and as we continue to even go through it currently though, but the whole world shut down and, and that can almost be crippling in many ways. But, you know, the, the story that you tell also once again, ties into that human interest, but it also is inspiring about, you know, what are the possibilities and how can we find um, uh, validation of the things that we're doing as we continue to push forward? And you shared several strategies about like even how you were sharing that out um, just even amongst different um, sources, you know, which makes me kind of connect to, to come to you, um, Dr. Schaefer. So, you know, in the work that you're doing, how do you create buzz in you know, sort of fashion among your staff and the broader district colleagues about the experiments and approaches um, that have made an impact at Hillwood? Yeah, and uh, good to be with you guys today. A uh, couple things uh, on, on our journey, um, particularly with our staff. So we, we, we started with the POSIP checks and, and we've always communicated, at least I have as a, an administrator on a weekly basis with our parents and community. Um, but for our staff, you know, we, we had the, the yearly, what we have a panorama survey, uh, and then there's a state survey. So while those are great, those are like one snapshot, you get a bunch of data, but it's nothing on a regular basis. So uh, we were excited when we could expand our possible uh, into our staff, you know, kind of getting those regular checks. Uh, in addition to, you know, those weekly academy teams that meet for us and, uh, you know, our department, our leadership, all those are more traditional, uh, but this was real quick, nice and easy. Um, and, and actually, our district bought it and didn't turn it on for us. And so uh, through the fall, we're like, we have these. Why are we using these? And so I went to our district and said, can you turn them on for my school? Like, let's go. Let's, let's find out, you know, particularly coming back out of the pandemic, uh, it's been a tough go. I said, I want to really give a, give a space for our, our staff. So uh, we got them turned on uh, back in the fall. And I just said, told our staff, like, you know, I know it's been tough. So be honest. Like if you're, you know, it's, y'all you know, know the questions, you know, yes, mostly no, like be honest. But the one thing I did ask them to do was share something positive. You know, we all need a little bit more positive stuff right now. And so I said, hey, use this time to shout out a colleague. Uh, and I look back, you know, we had 93 out of 115 staff take that first survey. And we had over 55, I think, individual comments that were typed out about other staff members and so that mm -hmm. kind of has leveraged this idea where we we want you to at least give us a, the basics but you know why are we not celebrating success in our buildings and we're, we've kind of leveraged POSIP on at least on that monthly basis to do that in conjunction with our others and so uh, we were able to do that two to three months had had good success with it and so between that and the work that we're doing both with our POSIP checks and we also do uh work with the call centers. Um, so our district asked if I would present to all principals and I, I just laid it out to them and said, you know, don't be afraid of what your staff is doing. You know, I mean, honestly, we should have a good pulse of what's happening anyways. This is hopefully confirming, or at least it's addressing a gap we weren't aware of. And so I kind of laid out what we did, showed them the email, showed them exactly almost plug and play for them. Um, and, and I think they've had pretty good success. So they, the rest of our district started back in February. Um, but it's been helpful. You know, the staff needs multiple ways. I still have some that every week it's anonymous. I have a lot to put their name out there, you know, um, you know, and that's great because they can give us the feedback. Just some people aren't comfortable doing it in all the other avenues. So uh, staff feedback is important. And I tried to express that to our uh, to our fellow principals. Like, don't be afraid of, of, of what you're going to hear, you know, because to me, I'm more afraid if I don't hear it. Uh, than actually getting that information. So we've hopefully created some buzz. Uh, you know, Caitlin and I talk all the time. I, I, I'm curious to see how they're doing across Metro Nashville with these uh, staff pulse checks. I think we've gotten two in for the whole district. 
uh, uh, since we started ours back, I think in November. So we're excited. Uh, and, and our staff knows, you know, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting or a staff pulse check or a, a check in with their department, they got multiple ways to give feedback. Uh, I just don't think we can run a school uh, without getting feedback from our staff. Mm, I mean, especially during this time, that's so powerful just to have that sense of support coming from other colleagues, like directionally. Um, but what you were sharing has been something that's kind of tied in, you know, some of these comments are definitely coming through in the chat. It's really tied into a trend throughout the day of just not being afraid to hear and being intentional about listening. And even sometimes with listening, it doesn't always mean necessary action, but uh, the validation, which even ties back to the whole ability to tell a great story um, as you kind of started us the conversation with Kelly. Um, but, you know, Dr. Schaefer, you mentioned the piece about being honest, right? And that being honest and, and really actively encouraging that is really the greatest gift anyone can give, especially as it relates to feedback. But you get this information, um, and then there's always the need to share it back out. And Kaylee, you know, you're one of our newest POSIT partners. And in your time sending post checks, what have you learned about communicating back out to parents about what you're doing? Yeah, it's we just started using PASSUP this year. We're in our fourth year as a school and we're in like a growth period. So it's been a really important time for us to hear more often from our families about, you know, the experience that they're having at a twall and, and anything we can work on or improve. And um, similar to what Steven said, I love the comments that parents give us. So, you know, they say the yes, mostly no, um, but then the comments that they give both the praise and the questions that come up or the constructive um, feedback that we get um, we send that out to specific leaders right away and within 24 hours have them follow up with those families. Um, and it's just a really nice way to one, let families know that we're like listening actively and that we're responding to this feedback right away and that we care about their feedback and their honesty. And, and two, you know, it really helps us as a school. Like we can, we can see trends like, oh, you know, the last two pass up checks, we got a lot of feedback about questions about after school. So you know, what, what has been our messaging around after school and how do we get tighter around that? How do we make sure that that parents are understanding that from the start better? Um, you know, busing, which I'm sure for other people is a, a hot parent topic all the time is something that we get feedback on. And so trying to work with our bus company to make sure that that's as, as smooth as possible for parents. And then probably my favorite thing is, is every time we get positive praise from parents, it's almost directly connected to our teachers. And so I send that, that out right to our teachers. And I think it's just like really meaningful for them, especially in a, a year that's been tough as, as many people know, to see direct comments from parents about like the teachers are amazing. The teachers are so dedicated. The teachers have changed my kid's life. Um, so I really love sharing that. Mm -hmm. uh, especially that piece is just rethinking messaging based on what you hear, but so much of, of, of the ability of many people are telling the stories in which you're just essentially a vehicle or a vessel of resharing uh, much of that information out. Now, a lot of what we talked about has really been in this space of, you know, we have these stories and these things that we're doing, um, we're reflecting on it and definitely trying to uh, build and connect with people in many different ways. Uh, but Kelly, telling an impact story can also happen um, retrospectively. Uh, but it can also happen before an initiative starts. So how do you, you know, how did you communicate the impact of new initiatives before you even had buy-in on them? <clears throat> yeah, it's a good question. You know, I think especially when you are at an organization, you know, like a school or in my case at the State Department of Ed, you know, where you've got a lot of um, internal partners, right, that you have to get on board. And it's interesting, I've heard Kaylee, Stephen, and Nicholas all like, and of course, anybody who's a POSIT partner already believes as I do very strongly in the power of internal communications, you know, and, and I think POSIP is just such an incredible tool for that. Um, but I think the thing that I always tell people, you know, I think in terms of communications campaigns, whether that's like you're trying to communicate a new initiative or you've got an individual new story you're trying to tell, um, it starts from the inside out. And I think people need to understand that your employees, your teachers, your board, your parents are your biggest communicators, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so, you know, for the good and for the bad, they are the people, they are communicators for you. And you have the opportunity, particularly if you're positive, I'm sitting here thinking like, I, 
all the people that I've worked with who like a tool like Possup, and I'm truly, I'm not trying to be a like a commercial for Possup here, but I mean, it's a really great tool for identifying your validators and, um, you know, for, for keeping a pulse on what these stories are. But anyway, I think the important thing to know is like Kaylee, you were mentioning, you know, the information that you're sharing back out with people in addition to just getting the information in. I would strongly recommend, you know, providing as much transparent information with your parents and your teachers as you possibly can on the front end and arm them with essentially talking points about what you're what you want them to be communicating and don't say it like here are your talking points now go tell people about it you know but what I used to do at the department um every quarter we would have our themes that we were trying to you know convey and it was mostly to convey to the media but we would literally print out little cards you know on cardstock design them all pretty and we would say like you know here are our key you know our, our key facts i think is what we called them right for the quarter and it spelled out very clearly in language that we we wrote what we were doing and why so that we were arming our people with accurate information so when they were asked about it even if it wasn't fully built and it wasn't fully implemented yet they had the right language to go out and talk about it um and then i think the other piece of that too is like yes arm your people with the right language and the understanding but also make yourself as available as possible to talk about it throughout the process. So we also, you know, and I, I've done this in lots of places, but I think having, you know, all staff meetings where everyone has multiple ways to present questions and feedback and engage in conversation. We used to do this with the commissioner of education and, you know, we had, you know, thousand plus people that worked with him. So we would make sure that we did something in person where he was available. We had satellite offices though. So it was also available virtually. And we, you know, provided opportunities for people to, to submit comments. Um, so I think it's like, it's two things. It's making sure that you're listening and you're being very transparent and actually listening to feedback on things as you're building the thing, whatever it is, you know, the initiative, the, the new program. And then also making sure that with the understanding that your people are gonna be communicating out to people, whether it's the media, whether it's, you know, prospective parents, whether it's board members, making sure that you've done a good job of um, providing them with language to use so that they're not, you know, out there on their own. And again, not in a, not in a like, here is your script, make sure you don't deviate it type of way, but just, you know, providing them the information um, in a succinct and clear way. So, um, I will say, having said all of that, you know, when we think about sharing impact stories with the media, um, if that's an audience that you're trying to reach, it is challenging to do that before you have any results because the reality is like, it is a busy, crowded news cycle. And so I would recommend, um, you know, as you're thinking about that, making sure you've got a tight ship on the front end and you've got, you've got those validators, you've got that, you know, results or success or momentum of some kind to show externally. Um, but I do think that while the ship is being built, kind of cultivating those internal communicators is just critical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that validator piece is, is, is so true, right? You, you can't do the work alone. Um, it all, often right. times, like they say, it takes a village or just even a community that's also going to rally and support any sort of initiative as you push it forward. Uh, but you still bring it back to those those elements of you know what makes a great story to you and and those results matter because as you mentioned people want to know is it effective or is it not is it something i should aim to replicate and just as much as you're you're telling a story many people are looking at it as an opportunity to derive um, some sense of insight from it as well and that in itself also continues to connect to that human interest element now, I know we have just about five minutes remaining. This time has gone incredibly fast. I feel like I can continue picking everyone's brain here for days. Um, but if within our audience, if anyone has any um, questions that they would like to ask, just please go ahead and send them to, to Jasmine Blue and the individual you like directed to. And we'll try to get through some of them um, as we close out our session. But while people may be chatting in a question or two, uh, and Nicholas, um, Kaylee, Dr. Schaefer, you know, what are some ways um, you share impact as a leader with your with your with your students? <clears throat> uh, 
I'll uh, I'll give you a couple of thoughts. And, and actually, I've, I've talked with Caitlin when we were trying to figure out what else is like a I could really use a student pulse check, to be honest. So that may be where we're headed next, at least with our high school kiddos. But, you know, we, we do the we do the panorama is probably our largest data point uh, for our students. We do that in the fall. Uh, and then what I do is usually follow up. Uh, we've done them in, in small groups. Uh, and go back and try to dig deeper. You know, the surveys are great, but it usually doesn't give you all the information you need. And so usually use that as a, as a source to go back and dig deeper into the different topics. And so, you know, whether it's uh, bullying or academic press or the different areas that that, that survey hits. Um, but yeah, I mean, our students are our best messengers. I mean, we, uh, we know when we have uh, parent tours, for example, our student ambassadors lead those sessions. You know, we, we try to get out of their way. They're the ones that are selling their school, not me. You know, and I've always been a believer in, in, in both middle and high. Um, you know, the school is the, the kids. You know, my job is to help facilitate it, but it's their four years. I've graduated from high school. I've had my four. This is their four. And my job is to provide the best experience for them. But it is truly there. So, you know, definitely listening, getting multiple ways. Uh, we would like to find some more quick hits. You know, a lot of them right now are informal, you know, between passing periods. Hey, Dr. Schaefer, man, the food was terrible today. Help me out. You know, my bus is running late. Help me out. You know, so there are some of those conversations. But uh, particularly at high school, I'd love to get more ways to connect with kids uh, on a regular basis. And, and POSIP could be an arm to help us do that as well. I was laughing because we just started student um, pulse checks. Um, we're middle school, we're fifth grade through eighth grade. Um, and we regularly do student surveys, but we wanna move them over to POSSIP just because we like the platform and dashboard and everything. But I will just share, we last year asked our students, like if you could have anything else at a twall, like a basketball court, you know, um, food court, library, and they picked a library. And we um, got donors to build a whole library and we just opened it up last month. And we even did a follow-up survey with the kids about what they wanted and they wanted like study corners and pillows. And so um, we're, our mascot is the astronaut. So we have planet shaped pillows in there and all these cool study corners. We have a graffiti mural of an astronaut um, and the kids are like obsessed with it. So I think the more that you can allow student voice to even drive decisions you're able to make as a school, the more that you can just empower them to see it as their community and their school. Yeah, I think the piggyback off of Kaylee, um, I think, you know, share the good news, right? I, mean, I think there's always an appetite for, for good news. I've never, I've never heard a parent tell me, no more good news, please, right? <laughs> Stop with the good news. <laughs> and so I think, I think to the greatest extent possible, um, you know, make sure it's consistent in how you share it, you know, same day, same time, uh, same tone, uh, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. um, Kaylee, that it, that story even too, just like listen to all three of, of how you're, you're leveraging this and even think about students, but the ability to ask the question <laughs> and take that information, did you use that um, in any way uh, as material or content and telling the story to get the funder to give? <clears throat> Oh, for sure. Yes. Um, and then the funder who paid the, it was about 80 grand what it cost to build this whole library. Um, she wrote a children's book and we had her come and read the children's book to our kids to open the library. Um, and so, and then she gave them all little writers notebooks and encouraged them to start writing their own stories. So it was really like one of the coolest things we've done and all driven by like student voice around what they wanted and what kind of a library they wanted. Uh, powerful. Uh, well, I know we're right up uh, against the time that we have, but I definitely have some some nuggets that I, I definitely be kind of sifting over over the next few days of thinking about how I do tell a story. Um, you know, some of the things that I have even jotted down, um, taken out, is there is a piece of listening is important. And a lot of this starts uh, from the inside out. Um, and then the validators are definitely a necessary tool, especially as you think about how you want your messaging to grow. Um, or for that additional buy-in. But those key elements that you definitely highlighted initially in the beginning of our conversation, Kelly, from, um, you know, is it newsworthy, results, success, momentum, um, validation, especially the human interest piece, um, is all going to be, I think, things that I think through as I continue to write, and even in my own personal reflections, because the things that we spend our time 
um, mulling over or contemplating on oftentimes are very much connected to what is internally um, interesting to us, but can also be in the same way to someone else. So uh, appreciate that. I really want to thank all of our panelists for being here today, um, spending their time and giving us um, a little bit of perspective and insight into how they have been able to tell their stories of impact. Uh, there are some tips um, provided in our chat. Feel free to click on that link for more resources, just how to help um, communicate your impact using POSIP. Um, and we thank everyone for being here uh, with us today. And I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you at the next event.